Hi, this is Keith with Total Seal Piston Rings, and here to present to you during the Performance Engine Expo is a little information, and we'll call it the unboxing party of the Mitotoyo SJ210. Uh, a lot of profilometers out there, a lot of different brands, a lot of different models. Uh, this has been the best bang for the buck unit that we've found so far. Uh, I'm sure there's others out there that are great, but we're going to talk a little bit about this one right now. Uh, for those interested, it is a model number 178-561-02A. Uh, this has the right size stylus for working with cylinders. Uh, there are other models out there, but this is the one that we have found to be uh, the most versatile. I've already cut the box open, so we've simply got the tab. I cut the tape, kind of had this already ready to go, and out we come. Got the carrying case with the 210, charger, power cord for the charger. We have the actual stylus, which we'll talk about in just a moment, strap, the extension cord for the detector, so you can remove it from the unit. Calibration reference, and the little stand for doing the calibration. And something that a lot of people miss, because they really don't see it in there, is the clear plastic protector for the screen. I have my own charger, so I don't have to unpackage these. So I'm gonna set this aside. And we're gonna start off with the basic unit itself. Mitotoyo SJ210. First thing we're gonna to wanna to do is pop the little back end cover off. So when we get it, we're gonna take that switch and we're gonna switch it to the battery on position. And of course, at that point, we're gonna take it, plug it in so we can charge the battery up. You just heard it. Very important that the battery stays charged. We're gonna make some changes in this particular unit. We're gonna change it from the default parameters to the way we need it to be set. And it'll stay that way, it'll keep those parameters as long as you don't let that battery go really dead. And so, you know, keep it charged up, charge it up every couple of weeks. Uh, we've got, let me get a better look here, RS-232 communication port, SBC port, but two ports you'll probably look at. Micro SD memory card slot, so you can actually put a memory card in this unit, save the data, record the data, load it to the card, and then you can take that data and dump it to your computer. Uh, using the Mitotoyo communication software that's available on their website for free. You also have the USB port. So at the same time, you can do the same thing in a, in a live manner. If you have this plugged into your computer, you know, laptop out by the home, desktop, whatever you're using, same thing. You'll have to have the Mitotoyo communication software loaded, but you can have that you know, plugged into your computer and actually be saving the data. So first things first, we've got it switched into battery mode. We've got it plugged in. So we're charging the battery. We can go ahead and power it up. This is what you're gonna see coming out of the box. So what we're gonna do, the very first thing I do with these is calibrate the unit. So what we're gonna need is we're gonna need, I'll call it the stand for the lack of a better term. We're going to need the calibration reference and this is not the calibrating surface, by the way. We open it up. This is our calibration reference. This one's a 116 RA, which is the most common one. I've seen these as low as 112. I've seen them as high as 119. 116 is the most common. So I've got my calibration reference, got it on my platform or stand. I've got my stylus or my detector, whichever you want to call it. This bag is actually sealed when you get it. I've already taken the liberty of cutting it off and opening it up. This is the stylus. This lake will probably zoom in. There's a little, small little diamond, kind of like a needle on a record player sticking out. Uh, I'll give you the precaution on this thing. Uh, these are pretty expensive. You want to treat this thing like it is, something expensive. We don't want to drop it. We don't want to bounce it off the floor. 
Uh, I had a gentleman yesterday whose machine kept reading over range. Uh, I walked it through him on the phone and we deduced that this was bad and he actually found a little dent in it where somebody had dropped it. Uh, when we're checking our cylinders, we want to make sure the cylinder's clean. It doesn't have to be hospital theater sterile, but clean. Brake cleaner, lacquer thinner, whatever you like, clear solvent, wash it out, wipe it out. We want to make sure it's a nice, clean environment. This does not like oil being put in it. Treat it like it is. It's an expensive part. We want to treat it like an expensive part. So, turning the profilometer over, Again, I don't know the exact midatoyal nomenclature, but this is what I like to call the hand tool. This part is detachable from the machine. It unplugs. We have an extension cable. Simple, how simple as it looks. Male, female connections so that we can extend this out and get it out of the machine for using it in cylinders. But for the moment, I'm just going to plug it back in. It's a spring-loaded latch right there. I'm going to take it, put it in, push it in, lock it. There's a little latch right there. You can see that. We got, again, male-female connections. Installed, make sure it's nice and seated. Seat it, make sure it's good and seated down. So we're going to take this, set it on our reference tool, and we're going to calibrate the unit. So now we're going to go into the menu. Obviously, we've got the little slide down door. If you hadn't caught that already, we're going to open the door. This exposes the, the controls or buttons. And we're going to start off with the enter menu. Enter menu and escape. These are your primary tools, we'll call it here. So enter menu. We're going to arrow up to calibrate measurement. We're going to hit enter. Now in this case, as I said earlier, this reference of 116, these machines come default at 116. And we're simply going to hit the start stop button. As you can see, it's making a trace. Okay, so we've got a 116 reference. The machine read it as a 114. So we need to tell it, nope, that's not right. We're going to come to the red button. We're going to update. So it understands it's off a little bit. It's going to correct. So let's just check it again. We'll give her another trace. Uh, one of the things you have to understand is these things never read exactly the same thing twice. You're going to move it around in a bore. It might read a little bit different here. It might read a little bit different there. So we have to kind of look at averages a little bit. You know, if, if it's 116 in one spot and it's, you know, 114 in another and 115 in change over here, that's perfectly normal. But if it reads 115 here and 22 over there, that's a problem. And same thing when you're calibrating. If for some reason when you calibrate and you've got a 116 reference and it reads a 24, a 45, there's something wrong. More than likely, there's a problem with the stylus. That's what I've almost always seen. So as you can see right now, 116.14, 116.55. I, I think we're in great shape. So we've done that. We're going to escape back out. Now we're going to go in and start setting up some parameters in the machine. They do not come set to do what we want it to do out of the box. These things, of course, have a thousand different functions that they can do. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to arrow down we're going to start off in measured condition. So we're going to arrow down one to measure condition. We're going to hit enter. We're going to have setting, as you can see, is in dark blue. We're going to hit enter. And first thing we're going to do is arrow down to parameters. We want to change the parameters. We're going to hit enter. As you can see, the ones highlighted in red, those are the things that are turned on. And as you can see, there's lots of Lots of things this thing can measure. We've got RA, RA, RZ, RPK, RT we can measure, waviness you can measure, R max. There's a, there's a lot of things this thing can measure. MR1, MR2, the, you know, the Abbott Firestone curve. Uh, the, there's a whole lot of things this thing will do. But we're going to set it up to do, we'll say, some basic numbers that most people can relate to working with cylinders. We're going to go with RA, arithmetic average of roughness. I generally leave that turned on for the people using wanting to measure deck surfaces, head surfaces, 
uh, you know, housing bore surfaces. We can actually turn on what's referred to as RK, which is peak to valley height. This is a, a more modern number that's being supplied by the gasket people. This is kind of the, you know, the, the tooth, how much tooth it has. Uh, but in our case, we're going to arrow over to RQ. We're going to turn that off. As you can see, it turned white. We're going to go over to RZ. We're going to turn that off. As you saw, it turned white. I'm going to arrow down to the bottom row. Arrow over. RK, I want to turn that on. Red. RPK, I want that on. Red. RVK, I want that on. Red again. So I now have RA, RK, RPK, RVK all turned on. I'm going to arrow down to Lambda or Alpha Charlie. <laughs> For those that want to read it that way, I'm going to hit Enter. And we're going to go down and set it to 0 0.1. What we're doing here is setting the segment length and cutoff length, how much data we're trying to measure. And we want to, we want to grab as much as we can. Uh, we want to take the biggest picture possible. We're going to hit Enter. That takes me back to the measure condition screen. It should automatically set the cutoff length to 5. It is. If for some reason yours isn't, you can enter that screen. We can change the lengths. But again, we want it to be 5. So I'm just going to escape back out to 5. So we now have four parameters. Lambda at 0 0.1. Cutoff at 5. That portion of the machine, we're good to go. So we're going to escape back out of screen. We're going to hit that twice. Now we're going to go down to setting up the environment, the running conditions. There's a whole lot of things you can set up in here. We're just going to go over some basics. So I'm going to arrow back up to the top. Normally, it'll start off right at the top. But as you already discussed, I've been in here uh, kind of messing around with this one. So typically, it'll start off at date and time. You can come in, set the year, date, time, whether you want it to read the year format, month format, uh, however you want it to read. So that's that's something I usually set up before they go out the door, but that's kind of your call. Uh, data output. How do we want to do it? We want it just to read out of the SPC port, the printer, data storage. Do we want to save it? Save it to a thumb, you know, to a drive. How do we want to save our data? We can select how we want to keep that data if we want to keep that data. We're going to arrow down. If you wanted to put a micro SD memory card in there, we can stop at memory card. We can come in. There is no card, so it reads not inserted. If you had a card in there, the machine will allow you to format the card. Uh, I've not seen a card off the shelf that's pre-formatted to work in these machines. So if you do buy a micro SD memory card, please remember you have to format it in the machine itself. We're going to arrow down to the auto sleep function. You keep seeing the screen graying out. That is part of the auto sleep function. So we're going to go into auto sleep. Auto sleep's on. This is what saves your battery power. But right now it's set at 30 second time. So we're going to arrow down to wait time of 30 seconds. Enter. And we're going to change that. I set them to run for about five minutes. So I'm going to arrow over, as you saw, to the left. Up to three. I mean, you can set it for five and a half minutes if you like, but I'm, I'm just getting kind of picky. So to 300 seconds, enter. I've now changed it to a five minute wait time. We're going to hit the escape button again. Take us back a screen. There's auto sleep. I hit escape again, took me back to the main menu. And I'm going to arrow down one to screen change. Enter. Right now, the screen is displaying as one vertical. And let me show you how this changes how the machine looks. I can hit Enter. Take it down to four horizontal. Enter. Escape twice. And now, I have my four settings all reading on one screen. So you don't have to page. If we left it as one, you have to hit the page button to read each one. The machine will actually allow you to see the actual crosshatch. Now, it's probably going to read an error, uh, but let's run that profile real quick. So what you're seeing right now is the machine is actually reading 
that reference piece. You're seeing what the profile is, and the machine is set to automatically scale the reading. As you saw initially, very large peaks, but it's saying, whoa, this is a fairly rough piece. I need to close this down a little bit so we can you know, get that better picture. So it, it will auto scale. And that again is something you can change. Uh, you can set it to not auto scale. You can set it fixed. But right now it's simply measuring that piece and scaling down. So now it read 115.46. We know it's a 116. Because it is so rough, it's throwing error codes on the other numbers. It's beyond, it's out of their range. But we can come in, see what the profile looked like. We can look at the bearing area curves, uh, MR1s, MR2s. Uh, these are all the parameters that you can set on this machine. You can actually send your printout, your readout, and it will show you all those. And now we've got a cylinder. Um, any way you look at it, it's big. I got I, I can't say five and three quarters, six inch. She's a big one. Uh, but you can't see it. But Lake, who just got all gooed up, and myself, this thing is covered in, in, in goo. Uh, so... In this case, got a little brake cleaner. Like we said before, we've got a, we want a nice clean surface. Get all that nastiness out of there. And before I do this, I want to show something. This is this is a, a, a real interesting tool or a little add-on that you can get for this thing. Uh, it's made by our good friends over at QMP in California, uh, Brad and the guys. Uh, unfortunately, I can't completely show it because this thing's so big. Uh, we have to have Brad make it a, a new one. But this will go in. It's really great for holding this thing when it's in the cylinder. You can take it in, take it. Hopefully you can see some of that. Spin this up until it positions itself on the opposite side of the cylinder. Holds everything really nice, really stable. Uh, you can do this by hand, but you got to make sure you don't slip. If you, if you move, you slip, you're going to trigger a false reading, and, and we don't want that. So this is a really handy tool. So we've got it in. We've set it in the bore. And we're ready to go. So we're just going to simply hit the start stop button. Right now it's retracting the stylus. Uh, there's some people that think you actually slide the whole unit up and down. You don't do that. Uh, it's motorized, kind of does it on its own. And we're getting a, a trace of this nice diesel cylinder. And as you can see, this has actually got a pretty decent finish on it. It's got a very reasonable amount of plateau to it. It's got good valley depth. You can see the lines coming down showing the valleys. That's your plateau or RPK. We're going to scroll back, back, back through. And better flip that around. That's a little backwards. Hopefully you can see that. So we've got an RA of a 25. RK of a 44, RPK of a 12, and let's see if I can get that to come back back up, and an RVK of a 74. So this is really pretty decent, especially for a, a replacement or factory type cylinder. Uh, decent peak number, great valley number, good core number. So that's some basic use of the profilometer and checking the holding tool. So hopefully that helps. That's the, we'll say, the basic walkthrough of the Mitotoyo S2J210 uh, on reading, setting up, calibrating. And as always, if you have any questions, because this is just measuring the work, but how do you get the finishes? Well, we've worked diligently with our customers and especially with the good folks at Rottler. Uh, we can help you out, figure out how to get to where you need to be with these numbers. So as always, feel free to reach out to us. Have a great day.